Hey guys, this is another inbox review. Uh, just one I recently got around about a couple of months ago. It's ICM's T3476 Early 43 production. It was one of the most numerously built tanks during the Second World War. Uh, the first one to have slant, sloped armour on it. Uh, tough little tank, uh, could hold its own. It certainly did against the invading German forces during Operation Barbarossa and was an equal match for the uh, German Panzer 2s, 3s and 4s during the early course of, night of the uh, war in Russia and served on until around about the late part of 1944 when it was actually replaced with the T-34-85 uh, which had an 85mm gun on it um, I did previously have a T-34 um, in my stash which was the old venerable Tamiya kit but sold that on and when I saw this I knew it was going to be a good kit and it certainly is. I mean the detail and the casting on it is beautiful. Um, so I thought why not? I've actually got two in my stash now. I've got the 85 as well which was recently released also and apparently ICM have also released a T-34-85 with tank riders. So uh, I was a bit miffed there because I could have held on and bought that as well but there you go. Anyway, without further ado, as you can see here, it's got the beautiful box art as is synonymous with ICM. Uh, 135th scale. Um, kit number is 35365. And the box art is depicting, I should imagine, a T-34 in the Battle of Stalingrad in the early stages of it. Uh, judging by the build, uh, buildings in the background, uh, which is taken from a photograph of what is now, I think it's called F Valindagrad or something or other else being renamed, which is where they're holding the World Cup football at the moment. And some of the ruins are still there to this day, just as a reminder of what went on there. And uh, on the side here, you've got a little, little, uh, little um, bit about the actual history of the T-34 in the box. Um, aged 14 plus and onwards. Well, that counts me out. <laughs> Sorry, joking. Box art on the side of the box here. And then obviously one of the actual colour callouts of the kit, which is it featured on the front box art there. So let's have a look. As is always the case with ICM, you've got the lid and then a white slide open box on which sturdy box right here uh, very similar to Zvezda there's your set of instructions which we'll go through right now again you got the box art in the front there history about the actual vehicle in Russian and English um, measurements etc um, color call outs which you've got on the bottom, it doesn't actually specify any paint brands, which I'm a bit surprised, well, apart from model masks, but again, if you've got the Hobby Colour app, you can actually uh, cross-reference that on your phone. Um, and then the first page is the actual sprue trees, which you see there, so you can connect, you can get my teeth back in, you can check all your kit parts, ask where they're supposed to be, and where it's got it marked out in the colours is the parts you want to actually be using for this specific kit. Okay, and then the first part, the assembly. Get the decals out of the way first. Believe it or not, is actually the upper hull, uh, where you've got the mount for the gun and the optic, the engine hatch, which goes on the back. There's your engine grills for the engine hatch again. Put them together on the back of the actual engine hatch as well. On the upper hull and then add the, add the cover there for the machine gun. Assembly of the actual machine gun itself. That goes on the inside of the actual gun mount. And then you've got the actual radiator grills which go up on the inside of the vehicle. And this is one of the actual uh, driver's hand uh, gunner's hatches. Next thing is another engine grill which goes on the back. Hatch goes on the front, but I think you do have the option of keeping that open if you want to, to show the driver. Inside mounts for the suspension go in. Front laces or the back armor plate, you put the bolt uh, and the armor together, etc. Then the exhaust stubs go on. Back plate goes onto the back of the upper hull. Then you put the inside part of the suspension in. Uh, I'm not quite sure what they are because I'm not very versed up in the T-34. The front mud guards go on. 
Okay. And then obviously you've got your suspension arms which go on the side of the lower hull. And then obviously you've got the final drive and the rear mount for the idler wheel that goes on. And then the same on the other side here. Uh, this is the assembly of the actual drivers and gunner's seat, I should imagine. Ah, yeah, I know what these are now. These are the levers for the actually control in the tank. So beg your pardon on that one. The seats go in. And then obviously your upper hole goes to your lower hole. Again, you can have the hatch home if you want to see the driver's cabin there, etc. I will probably blank this all off with a bit of plastic card, actually. Otherwise, you're going to see right through the actual hole. Then it's the fitment of the road, running wheels, etc. It's obviously dependent on which version you're doing and the idler wheel, etc. They are supposed to go on, but I won't be putting them on until the final process of the build, which is going to make life a lot easier for you. And then you've got the, um, I think, the bow rods, which go on the side of the hole here. Uh, you've got the catch for the main uh, hole hatch here or driver's hatch I don't know it's been oh no it's the rear engine hatch beg your pardon that's the rear engine hatch get my finger out of the way because I got a complaint last time and then you've got rear parts and lumps and bumps which actually go onto the rear of the hull more tools etc go onto the hull okay let's move over to the next page and then it's the assembly of your tracks. Now, apparently these are link to link tracks. I don't know what they're like, but I'm certainly going to have a crack at them. So it will give you that nice sort of natural sag on the tank as well. And then they supposedly go on. I'm not going to do that until the very end again. Um, what's this one? Oh, I think this one is part of the actual breech, which goes together. Now machine gun again there. Machine gun connects to the breech. Um, you've even got the actual uh, row of uh, spent shells there. Well, that's pretty good. See, this is why I like RCM with the amount of detail that go into them. Then that's put on the side of the actual breech again because they were mounted either side. Then you've got the uh, mantlet that goes on. Breech goes in. Lower part of the turret goes on. And then you put the front part of the mantlet on. Okay. Uh, not a lot of detail on the inside, there's no interior on this kit specifically, so I suppose it would be if you wanted to do one, you'd have to get an aftermarket set or scratch build it. Then it's a two piece barrel, which is a bit of a disappointment. Uh, and then you've got part of the mantlet again, uh, another part at the top of the mantlet, um, air vent which goes on. Not quite sure if they're optics for field vision of view. Oh no, they're the hatches for the actual commander's hatch and the loader's hatch. You can have them down or up, I would assume. Then you've got the vision port there, rear grab, grab, arm, grab arms that go on the side, vision port. Turret goes onto the main hull. Then you build up the turret bin or ammunition packs which go on the back of the hull. You've actually got a little bit of a um, uh, backpack which goes on there as well, which is just stowage. And then more lumps and bumps go on. A few more extra tracks go on the side of the vehicle, uh, etc. A few more lumps and bumps, including the headlamp. Then the tow cables go on. And that's it. Your tank is done. Okay. Um, and then obviously you've got your colour call outs. First one is for an uh, example at the Battle of Leningrad around about summer 44. And then obviously you've got the uh, winter version for winter 43-44. I might actually go for the winter version actually, it'll be interesting. I actually got four options, beg your pardon. And um, this one is of a Revolution Mongolian tank column, winter 43-44, again with the white wash scheme, as it were. Um, and then you've got another one here, again, white scheme. Um, that's for the Severa Moretz tank column, winter 42-43. And the final one is for the Battle of Stalin is at Stalingrad Front, Winter 42-43. And the final one here is of a T-30 of the 5th Guard, Tank Corps, Kursk, Arc, July 1943. I might go for that one. Okay, let's have a look at the kit itself. 
Now, as you can see here, it all comes in one big bag, resealable. For the purpose of this video, I did actually unseal it. Uh, tracks, you got rubber tracks. Mm, don't know about that. <laughs> don't know what they're like. Um, I think I might go for the link to link. I suppose that's an alternative. And then you've got the tow cable here. Um, lower hole. Nice detail on there, very crisp with the escape hatches underneath. Nice little bit of a guideline for the front glacis. Yeah, not bad. You've even got the kit number inside because obviously this one doesn't come with a full interior. Nice crisp detail. There is a little bit of texture on the front here, which is nice. Upper hole, again, nice level of detail here, even with the weld seams. I don't know if you can see that, if I can get it into shot. There you go, there's the weld seams just along the edge here. Very nicely caught, nice sharp detail, especially with the bolts. I mean, these were just basically mass produced, there wasn't a lot of detail. Um, and obviously you've got the familiar sloped armour at the front there, which were the T34. T34 was well known for. So it's not a big vehicle. Um, and then obviously you've got the turret. Again, not a lot. Oh, there's some nice casting. Well, there's some beautiful casting texture on the side of the turret here, which is absolutely exquisite, which you can see here. Very nicely caught. Another engine hatch here. This is your um, ammunition packs. Hatches here, lower part of the actual turret. Uh, yeah, quite nicely molded. And these parts are in protected cellophane so you don't lose them. Actually, you know, for the purposes of video, I will actually undo them. Obviously you've got some delicate parts on here. Let's see if we can remove this cellophane. Hang on. Sorry. Excuse me. Bear with me a minute, guys. Ah, here we go. These are all the engine grills, etc. Again, lovely detail on them. Very crisp and sharp. You've got the ends of the tow cables here. I'm a little bit disappointed in the machine guns, not a lot of detail. As I say with the barrel, it's a two-piece barrel. Might go for a metal one, possibly. Um, engine hatches are very beautifully crisply detailed, as you can see here. There's the mounts for your exhausts. And then there's your um, top here. I might get some aftermarket from Black Dog for this, actually. And on the actual machine gun port, Again, you've got some very nasty, lovely casting texture on that. It's gorgeous. Beautifully caught. Suspension arms, which you can see here. Okay. There's your tools. Wasn't a lot of tools carried on a T-34, unlike their German equivalents. And you've got the machine gun belt here. If I can get it into shot. Right where I've got my finger. That's very nicely done. So that's that one. And then on the back here, you've got the rear plate. Nicely detailed again. The engine mount, very nicely there with the engine grills, beautifully done. And there's some nice casting texture on this mantlet as well, as you can see there. This is exquisite. Then you've got the other half of the turret, more tools, tow cables, uh, and then obviously you've got your um, barrel rods here. Breech, nice detail on the breech, which you can see here. Hatch is very nicely done. Spare tracks, and again with the bolts, nicely caught there. Uh, and there's your spare tracks, nice level of detail on those. Yeah, quite impressed with the kit. The level of detail is not bad on this, actually. Um, 
And then obviously you've got the final two sprues, which are the running gear. I'll just bring out one. If I can get it out there. But I'll put the lower, bring the lower one, you can have a look. Again, beautiful level of detail on here with the nuts and the bolts, etc. And they will come out beautifully with a bit of weathering and a wash. And a bit of dry brushing. So yeah, exquisite, absolutely exquisite. This is a lovely looking little kit. And then obviously, finally, you've got your decals. Now these are a little bit on the shiny side, so I'm a bit dubious about these. And I've heard bad things about some of their decals. So what I may well do is source some aftermarket decals for this particular vehicle as and when I get around to building it. So there you go guys, that is the T3476 1943 production by ICM. Um, compared to the Tamiya kit, I have to say this one's got a little bit of the edge, although I'm a bit disappointed it's got rubber tracks. Um, I might well get some frills, possibly, I don't know, I'll see. Oh, maybe another one, I don't know. Uh, but again, I mean, basically the kit itself does look to be a sweet little build. Um, and if it's anything like their 85, that'd be a nice one too. So there you go. And I'm just going to pop them back in the box. There it is. I do love their boxes. They really are neat and tidy. You know you're not going to lose anything. So there you have it. That is the T3476. In 135th, if I can get the lid back on, by ICM. Go out and get one, that's all I will say to you. Um, so anyway, hope you like the inbox review, and until the next time, get kit crazy, happy modelling, and I'll speak to you soon.